Well, this is a corner of the basement that I don't get to very often. I don't think we've played any poker down here yet. Um, but I wanted to record a video because it's been a while since I've done one. Probably since I started at Civis. Well, since I was working on my application for Civis. Which was um, the game project that I did in response to um, uh, the guy I'm working for, Jack Moreland, gave me a windmill and asked me to put it in Unity and see what I could do with it. At that point, I was learning some things online um, through YouTube, a YouTube channel called Quill18Creates, which if you're watching this on YouTube, then you should probably open a tab and go there too, um, because chances are this is something that you would be interested in. Um, a lot of really great tutorials. I'm not, I haven't done a lot of research on the guy that actually runs the channel. I'm sure that he makes games. I'm not sure what they are. Um, I just found them as tutorials and they've been great. <clears throat> but I was also reading a book about visual, visual C Sharp, um, which between those two things I was able to create a fairly convincing first person shooter toy, I don't want to say game, because it's something that you play with, it's not something that you win or lose. Um, and it was fun, and uh, Jack was somewhat impressed, Luke, uh, who was my friend there, that originally told me about Civis and the Get Involved was also somewhat impressed, so that was good. Um, I was put on a project for uh, the previous Chancellor, I think Chancellor Andreas Cohen, uh, Howard Cohen, about social justice. Um, I spent my first week working on that, and uh, we had a review meeting um, where I was able to demonstrate like the beginning of how the game would start out, um, selecting avatars and naming them. And it's something the whole class participates in, so everybody has their own avatar that goes through the game. Um, it went really well, um, despite the fact that I had not heard about the project previously or when it was assigned or anything like that. Um, Chancellor Cohen was pleased with the progress that we made on it, which was surprising considering, you know, I kind of found out about it a couple of days beforehand. And, um, the stuff that I created, I felt like, was the bulk of the project thus far. Luke did some great models. Um, he modeled the entire scene for the room in which this game would take place, as well as um, the character that's doing tutorials on how to like lead you through the process. Um, but the scripting was me. So it surprised me, one, the fact that I had no previous experience in game scripting, in C-sharp programming, um, and I was kind of running away with this project, but at the same time the fact that people felt as if it was a competent project, even though it was just mostly me and I was mostly learning out of a book on YouTube. So that was great. Um, after that meeting, um, I know Luke had bigger and better assignments to work on that were actual, like, uh, for clients of the university instead of members of the university. Um, so at that point, um, there were a couple more things that Luke was going to work on, but then Jack wanted me to actually take the project on. So within my first week, I was uh, doing, projected to be like sole designer and programmer on this game for the previous chancellor, which was really exciting. So that's where I was my first week, um, and it's been almost a whole other week. I've got tomorrow, tomorrow is Thursday, the day after that is Friday. On Friday, I'm meeting again with Chancellor Cohen to show him the progress that we've made for the week. The progress we've made for the week is really just that I've been looking up more tutorials on how to do some things. I'm integrating some of the fine data that goes along with these avatars into the game. So it's not just visual, but there's also something happening behind the scenes, too. Um, so I'm going to be working on that tonight. I'm going to be in the office all day tomorrow and all day Friday. Um, but really, Friday morning is what I'm going to be presenting. So it's going to be... We'll see. Um, but I also, at this point, felt like um, I was doing what I wanted to be doing. So this whole video process, um, I think I started it because I wanted a way of encouraging myself to stick to getting something done. Um, but I feel like I haven't really put any thought into it at all. I sit down with the camera, I talk about what's been going on since the last time I sat down with the camera. Um, 
so I don't really know what it's turning into or what's coming of it from it. What I do know is that um, it's kind of a chronicle of step by step the problems that I was encountering and how I solved them and what the next big thing was and how that went. Um, so it's fun to go back probably and look through these and see what seemed like a big problem or a big opportunity at the time turned out to be not that big of a deal. Um, but really I think instead of this being something that is going to help people see the process of getting into game design, I think it's something that I can probably just refer back to. I originally thought that this would be something that if I'm going to be in game design and other people want to be in game design, they'll just see what I did and the problems that I faced and things that I struggled with and they'll be able to copy those. But really the problems that I've run into so far are uh, I don't know what to do, so I go online, I look it up, I Google it, and I get it. Um, with Unity, there's this huge database of information. You can ask other users, you can check their documentation. It's very precise and very thorough. You can um, even get like live support from the people that developed Unity. If you, I think that's a paid feature, but like it's so simple. And the book that I bought on C Sharp was six bucks. I really don't think that that's a hindrance. If you, I think that if you're looking at game design and you're looking at programming and you're feeling that programming is going to be a hindrance to you, it's really not. Because if you sit down with a tutorial and a game engine like UDK or Unity um, and you actually want to do some scripting, don't think of it as, I have to learn it so I can build a game. Just think of it as, this is the game I want to build. So how do I accomplish this first thing? And then you go and you look for it. It might take a week for you to find the answer to that specific question, but when you find it, you'll have it, and you'll be able to use it over and over again. And that's how coding is learned, at least in my experience so far, is that you learn it <coughs> by encountering problems and solving them. And then as you continue to have those same problems, you gain expertise on how those problems are solved and how to do it in better and better ways, um, and wasting less and less of your time trying to answer those questions. Um, Modeling, on the other hand, is still something that I don't grasp. I shouldn't say that. Modeling is something that I have a grasp of. I can create a model. I can create pretty much any model that I want. But when it comes to looking at um, you know, professional work and how you do those high polygon models and make them precise and make the polygons in the right places with the right number of you know, rings and polygons in each ring and the right number of... Um, uh, bins and how that affects animation and, and like making the perfect model basically is something that eludes me when it's something as complex as character modeling. I've done several box type things like houses and things for these projects and that's fine. Even this avatar project is fine because it's a simple shape. It's really just the silhouette that you're worried about but when you get into um, high poly modeling for normal maps that are applied to low polygon models that's still something that I'm fairly unfamiliar with. For instance when you design a high power game, what is the appropriate level of polygon modeling? Do you do a high, a low, somewhere in between? Where do you apply normal maps? Um, I've been spending a lot more time with Skyrim recently because some of my friends got me into Game of Thrones and then that brought me back into, hey, I never finished some of the expansions or one of the expansions. Um, and it's interesting to look at the, the model viewers that they have for their item systems and see how much of their um, geometry is actually just normal mapping which is something that you can tell when you shift something all the way to the side, all the little bumps of things will completely disappear and that'll just be a sheer flat surface. So when you turn it towards you, it looks as if there's geometry there, and when you turn it sideways, it's just flat. That's when a normal map is being used. So, you know, when you have a model of something and you turn it, and you can actually see a curve, that means that there's actual geometry there. But if you turn it, it looks curved, and you turn it and it's flat, then there's no curve. So it's interesting to see the choices that they make. I'm actually surprised, one, how effective their normal maps are, but more how many polygons they really do use in their models. Because I was thinking, you know, probably if you can do this much with normal maps, there's no real need for, uh, you know, that many models, or that many polygons in the model. And you turn it sideways and you realize there really is a curve where the jagged edges aren't so sheer. And, um, you know, that's really impressive. But then at the same time, what is impressive is when you can tell that there's jagged edges, and yet you turn it sideways and it looks completely circular or completely round or whatever the effect they're going for is because of the normal maps and how well that's done. Um, so that still eludes me. Like, how that interacts is... I'm not very familiar with. I've spent some time in Mudbox, but um, 
you know, not enough to actually say that I've made significant progress. Enough to, like, know what the tools are. Kind of like when somebody sits down with Photoshop, they can tell you what the different things do on the side and how they're used, but um, can I use it to create a precise humanoid model? No, I can create a humanoid model. I can tell you, where, show you where the eyes are and nose and things like that, but you're not going to believe that it's a real person, uh, which is the whole point of a game like that. But anyway, um, all of that to say, I think I'm learning programming a lot quicker than I'm learning modeling, which is good because modeling to me is just a tool to show what it is that's going on in your head. And programming is the most effective tool to show, I want something to work like this. Well, I don't know if that's possible. And the way that you prove whether or not it's possible is you try to program it. So if you want to pitch an idea of a game to somebody, if you want to walk in a room and say, you know, I really think that we should have this kind of a gun because it would have this kind of effect. Like, it would be nice to stick people on the back with this and then stick it on the ceiling and watch them fly around. You know, well, people will say, I don't know, that might be too expensive for the processor. I don't think that will go well. And you can, using some simple code, demonstrate it with some low polygon models and a low polygon scene and some, you know, basic baked lighting. You can use that item and you can show them how it works and then you are actually participating in the design process for the game. So that's the exciting part of programming. The exciting part of modeling is just the beauty of it, I guess. I don't think I'll ever be at the level to model the types of faces and characters and expressions that I'm seeing in the Metal Gear Solid trailer that just came out, which is 5. That's the most recent E3 2013 MGS5 trailer. And MGS is still the reason that I'm in this industry, and uh, Kojima Productions is still where I ultimately want to work. Um, but I just, I don't know, That's that level of animation eludes me. But I'm not as concerned as sitting 14 hours straight at a seat trying to make sure that my model looks perfect as I am concerned about how do I express in this game what I want to say, what I want people to experience. Are they getting the effect that they want? A lot of that has to do with what they're seeing, but a lot more of it has to do with, you know, when you act this way in that environment, what response is there from the environment. Let me check and see you're probably out of film. Or memory. Eh. It's been 12 and a half minutes. So I'll wrap it up. Um, that's where I'm at. I am a Unity game developer on my LinkedIn profile for Civis because I work on Unity game development. And probably pretty soon I'll be able to know what that really entails and what my job's really going to be. But for right now, that's what I do, so that's what I am. Um,